So, dear Yaakov, please take the stage. Um, I'm happy to introduce um, Professor Uda Bauer. I think that his name is well known to everyone here, but uh, Uda Bauer is a professor emeritus in, uh, of history and Holocaust studies at the Havram Hellman Institute of Contemporary Jewry, Hebrew University of Jerusalem, academic advisor to Yad Vashem. And uh, Yuda is 97 years old now, and he's still very clear, and you, you will be able to hear. Yuda uh, was a member of uh, my kibbutz. I was uh, a member of Kibbutz Shoval in the south of Israel. Uh, now I'm a member of kibbutz in the north of Israel, but uh, Yuda and me were members of Kibbutz Shoval, and except of the fact that he is a very uh, spatial uh, researcher, he is a very special human being as well. He is a very kind and nice and good person. Great pleasure to uh, participate in this program, and especially as this is uh, uh, under the auspices, uh, basically, of Sister Carol, Professor Carol Rittner, a very close friend of mine, and uh, I'm very happy that uh, she took the initiative to uh, uh, deal with this uh, very central issue. Now, of course, uh, the difference between uh, uh, the situation of uh, women in, uh, in the Holocaust and other cases of genocide and mass destruction is that uh, the in in the case of the Holocaust the purpose of the uh, of the Nazis was to annihilate everyone uh, men or women men and women and uh, 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 in fact the uh, cruelty and the mass murder against uh, women was a, an essential part of uh, the Nazi program. Uh, the uh, Any kind of consideration of the female body and the, uh, the uh, uh, family structure uh, of the Jews was unimportant to them. They just killed everyone they could. Now, the reaction of the Jewish women was determined by uh, the fact that at the beginning of the persecution and in its, in its progress, the concentration of the Germans was first of all to force the Jewish males into mass labor and forced labor. And then the first mass killings concentrated not only on women, not only on uh, on men, but mainly on men, and that left the Jewish women in a new situation, where the uh, provider of the family or the man in the house had disappeared, and they had to take care of everything, and uh, they uh, reacted in a very uh, interesting way. Uh, the uh, heroines, Jewish heroines, uh, in in the Holocaust, were uh, to a certain extent concentrated on female figures. This started with people like Marie Schmolka, for instance, in Prague, who concentrated uh, uh, family uh, support uh, for persecuted Jews. It uh, uh, you can find uh, a similar situation in Paris and France. And, uh, of course, uh, a central figure in the whole in this whole situation was that of Gizzi Fleischmann in Bratislava, who not only tried to help Slovak Jews, but tried to concentrate an effort to help persecuted Jews everywhere in Europe. She did so with a tremendous courage, and uh, she's uh, the, sub the subject of uh, a number of researches, a very important researches, uh, published, uh, bo books were published about her, and uh, uh, she was killed by the Nazis in the end in Auschwitz. 
But this was at the, at the last moment in the winter of 1944, uh, or uh, late uh, autumn of 1944. Uh, until that time, she uh, uh, did whatever she could to rescue groups of Jews and to uh, to try to contact uh, the free world. First of all, Switzerland, but not only Switzerland, through Switzerland, the United States, to get help from Jewish organizations. So uh, Gideon Fleischmann is a central figure in, in this whole story. Um, but there were ordinary Jewish women who, uh, when the disappearance of the men in the family became a fact, they uh, did whatever they could to uh, uh, concentrate on the help and the rescue of their children. <coughs> in the end, this was not successful, of course. The Nazis killed everyone they could. But there were attempts by Jewish women to uh, help children, to, to rescue children. To a certain extent, the uh, non-Jews who helped Jews, uh, the so-called righteous Gentiles, that's the wrong term. The 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 people who helped, uh, especially in Poland, concentrated on rescuing children, and therefore the uh, and these were women, Polish women, and uh, through their help, quite a number of children were rescued. Uh, that's one point. Another point is that of a whole group of nuns. Catholic nuns uh, associated with the Benedictine order. This is not only true of Vilnius, Vilna, but mainly there where a uh, abbess of a nunnery, Catholic nunnery, uh, was the one who actually smuggled the first weapons to uh, the Jews in the Vilna ghetto. So uh, there was a certain amount of contact. Also, there is the very interesting uh, phenomenon of a uh, group of Polish scouts, Hatzeri in Polish, who uh, uh, decided to help Jews. These are Catholic scouts. Their contact was with the underground movement of Hashomer Hatzair, which is atheistic and socialistic and so on. It is a very interesting contact, very unusual. And these were uh, contacts because many of them had, had survived, uh, carried on after the war as well. Uh, so th there are uh, different aspects of the... Uh, a participation of women in uh, both as victims and also as resistors. Now, of course, mainly the victims, because the story of the Holocaust is not a story of the rebellion and the rescue. The story of the Holocaust is one of murder, one of mass murder. And when you deal with a mass murder at the hands of the Germans, uh, there was no difference, of course, between men and women there. Uh, one could argue, and one has argued, I'm not sure that that is the correct way to put it, uh, that the, the, the Nazis were uh, intent of, uh, intent of uh, uh, making sure there would be no uh, remnant left. And so the question of killing women and children was central. I'm not sure that this is correct. But there is an argument like that, and uh, the so what you need, what you have in the story of the women in the Holocaust, you have to deal both with the perpetrators and with the victims, and then you find that on the perpetrator side, the participation of uh, Nazi women in the Holocaust was quite considerable. They uh, did whatever they could to kill. Uh, a few of them were found out after that, after the war. 
few, very few of them were punished. Uh, but the more we research the situations, the more we discover the participation of Nazi women in uh, persecution and murder of the Jews. So you, when you deal with the women in the Holocaust, you have to deal, as I said, with the uh, perpetrators and the victims. But you can you also have to deal with those who are neither perpetrators nor victims. Uh, they are called usually bystanders, but I think that's a wrong term. They did not stand by. The very fact that they didn't do anything will put them on the side of the perpetrators. But uh, the people who were not actively involved, let us say, non-Jews, there you have a number of uh, women who uh, try to rescue. And this is very important. You have, uh, especially people in Poland, in Slovakia, uh, here and there in other places as well. Now, of course, the persecution of the Jews was different in different countries. The stages were different. So that when you deal with France, for instance, you cannot deal with the same kind of situation as you deal with Poland or Romania or the occupied parts of the Soviet Union. And the, the position of the women in uh, France, for instance, was quite different. Then you have uh, Jewish women who, uh, realizing the danger, without knowing exactly what Auschwitz was, uh, realizing the danger of the deportation of the Jews from France, did whatever they could to rescue people. Jewish women, but also some French women who uh, quite naturally uh, were uh, part of this, uh, this whole thing. Again, a, a, a Catholic nuns were in France uh, uh, to a certain extent active in uh, hiding Jews and rescuing Jews. Uh, one could say uh, more than than uh, monks, more than men. And quite a lot has been written about this. Not only Catholics, also Protestants. There's a very strong minority of Huguenots, of uh, uh, French Protestants, who uh, uh, did whatever they could to help Jews. And there again, the position of uh, Protestant women is, is, is very central. And a lot has been written about this. So you have the, uh, the, uh, the overall situation. Is there a justification of separating uh, the story of the women in the Holocaust from the story of the Holocaust generally? I think yes. I think there was something special. The fact that uh, uh, many women were mothers and they had to protect their children made them into a different city, uh, put them in a different situation. And I think that uh, whenever research today is done, one has to deal with these three aspects the perpetrator women, the victim women, and the different attitudes in both cases, and those of who were neither perpetrators nor victims, and their attitudes. And again, you have a very strong uh, uh, presence of women. And one has to re-emphasize that with the disappearance of the men, the, the burden of keeping the family going as much as they could was uh, a task of the women. There was no other way. And so they rose up to the situation. And a great deal has been researched on this. And the research is going on. We find all kinds of uh, uh, situations. Uh, some of my colleagues have found diaries, which we didn't really realize existed, uh, that deal with this aspect, the rescue of children by women, both by Jews and uh, the few non-Jews who helped. So this is the uh, 
this is a topic which needs more research and uh, the, surprisingly uh, documents uh, in the form of diaries and letters that we did not uh, pay attention to, that we ignore to a certain extent, exist and are coming up now. And some of our, some of my colleagues uh, are dealing with it. So the, the, the topic of the conference that I'm addressing now is very timely, and very important, and the participation of uh, international organizations and uh, uh, Jews and non-Jews alike uh, in this uh, story is of tremendous humanistic and uh, worldwide value. Thank you very much. As the honorary president To Professor Bauer, we wouldn't be able to answer questions now, but if someone wants to react to his words or to add things, you are most welcome. Thank you, Yaakov. I would like to refer to what Professor Bauer said. I'm the only child of Holocaust survivors. Both my father, may he rest in peace, and my mom were Holocaust survivors. My father had a family before, not only sisters and cousins, etc., but also he had a wife and a daughter, Ruth, my sister. She was nine years old. They were taken to Auschwitz from Hust, Czechoslovakia, which was transferred to Hungary at that time on June 44. It was the evening of Shavuot. Those Jews who were deported that late already knew what's going on and they knew what's the meaning of right and left. My father's first wife was young, healthy, strong. She was 35 years old. But she knew that their daughter, Ruti, was nine. And when she was sent to the left, the mother went with her. Less than a year after, my father was liberated and it took him six weeks to find my mommy and to remarry. I never knew about them. And I was 12 years old when I discovered this family story. And here I connect to Professor Bauer's word, women the bravery of women, the second that a woman had to decide, should I go right and maybe survive, or should I go with my child? And women mainly made the decision and they went left. Thank you. Okay, so I'm very honored to present our second. Oh, so because we have uh, still many people, um, not all of our Israeli participants managed to join us here physically. So we're going to try to keep with the schedule. Um, if there are any, not any more people who want to discuss um, Mr. Yehuda Bauer's lecture, and we are very thankful that he managed to make this video for us. We're again going to take a very short break, so please feel free to talk informally, and we're going to start with our next keynote uh, on time, which is um, uh, at 3.50, okay? Yeah, yeah, thank you so much.